look at your neighbor and say you look like the next year. Three, two, one. You are crossing over in a different way. Because Jesus is the reason for this season, not just this season, but the next season and the next season. And if you believe that, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Because God's in this building today. Who's ready for their blessing today? Who's ready for their breakthrough today? Who's ready for their freedom today? I can't hear you. God can't hear you. Come on and give him a shout of praise. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Because this is the reason. You are the reason. You are the reason for the season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Revelation Church. I can't hear y'all. I can't hear y'all. Come on, come on and get stir up your spirit. Stir up your spirit. God wants to hear you tonight. God wants to hear you tonight. God is answering you right now. The angels are here right now answering your call. He's answering your call. So you better celebrate in this moment. Celebrate in this moment that he is here. Hallelujah. Hey. We about to have a good time. Hey.
every single time. Every single time. You are the reason for the season, God. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah, saints. Y'all ready to get down? Hey. All right. Check this out. Well, say who got the praise? We got the praise. And who we give the praise to? Jesus. I said who got the praise? We got the praise. And who we give the praise to? Jesus. I said who got the praise? We got the praise. And who we give the praise to?
a joyful noise. God is taking care of you. Make a joyful noise. Here I am to bow 
life to me you are more than life to me you are more than life to me lord you are more than life
You laid your life down for me who wouldn't serve The least I could do is serve you, Lord The least I could do is bless you, God The least I could do is thank you, Lord The least I could do is praise you who wouldn't serve
bless in the day. Get your bless in the day. Get your bless in the day. Get your bless in the day. Say, I am stressing the day. I am stressing the day. I am stressing the day.
a God who is at work at Revelation Church. If you came to this place, just know you are in the right place for a blessing. You are in the right place for an encounter. You are in the right place to be shaken by the Holy Spirit. Just know you will never leave this place the same because God is in this place, because God speaks in this place, because God moves in this place. And this is such an amazing week where we celebrate the birth of Jesus. 
when we celebrate the greatest gift humanity has ever received, the gift of salvation through a man, Jesus, who came, the word living flesh on the earth, who came and died and rose again. We celebrate Jesus. We celebrate Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. We praise you in this place, Lord. We praise you in this place, Jesus. Come on, just worship him. Just worship. Yeah. Cause Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. Oh. Jesus, we thank you. You are God alone. Apart from you, there is no other. Father, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We ask you, Father, to be merciful upon us. Forgive us of our sins. Purify us by reason of the Son, your Son, Jesus Christ. By his blood, sanctify us, O Lord. As we stand before you, that we may receive the promise that you have ordained for us for this evening. Lord, we have come with so many burdens. No one can give us rest except you. So Lord Jesus, we look to you. 
We look to you because you are our salvation. Help us this day. Bring us out of darkness. Bring us out of the pit that your name may be glorified through us. We thank you for your love that is unconditional. Father, no one can justify themselves before you except you justify us. So we thank you because of your son Jesus. We can stand before you and we can receive all that you have ordained for us. May your name be lifted forever and ever and ever. Eternally, Lord, may your name echo in the universe, both visible and invisible. We thank you that what you have done for us today already will remain in the books of eternity. That through generations to generations, even in the new earth, we will remember what you have done for us today. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. How, how is everybody doing? You okay tonight? No, I thought you say you're doing great. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to me. I believe this with all my heart. I believe this with all my heart. I am not saying the Lord told me this, but there are certain things that God never has to say. You know, I always say this, that even God's silence is saying something. If you are somebody that observes God, you can know God's intention and what he's saying without him opening his mouth. I truly believe there is a dimension of grace we are about to enter into. That even those who are in heaven will be jealous of us. They will wish they lived in our time. Whoever is celebrating, may you receive it in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. God is interesting in the way he works. And uh, you realize that we cannot control him. We can't tell him anything. You know, when we say, Father, do it now. In reality, he's looking at us like his children. I would do it because I love you. But no one can make God do anything. God does it because he has already decided. No one can compel God to do anything. Listen to me. If you know him, you know you can't change him. You can't do anything about anything. What he decides is what it is. And if God would do something, it's because it's not because he's spontaneously deciding. This is preordained before our time. So, I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact. That the level that people will begin to function in. That those ones that are in witchcraft will admire us. Simon the sorcerers will try to buy what we have. Ah, you didn't hear me. Hold on, hold on for a second. People will look and realize crystals are useless. People will look and realize idols are useless. You see, I love what the great apostle said. And I always remember this because when the Lord uh, released me to do his work in 2012, for 30 nights... I was being taught every evening, every evening. I was being, those who know that were with me, they know this. I will be taken and I will be brought back. I will be taken, I saw hell, I saw heaven. Sometimes it, will, it, was, it was an experience. I was physically sick, not because I was sick. My body just went through something I had never known possible. I was thrown off completely. But there is something I love, that if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, which was one of the, main books that the angel of the Lord really taught me a lot of things from and I always refer to this book more than any other book because the foundation of what I do 
is hidden in there. The kingdom of God is not in word. It's never been. You see, we have, the scriptures are pure. The scriptures are holy. But this was a manual to inspire you, to move you closer to God. Amen. People are trying to repeat this and this is the past. This is not the future. No, you didn't hear what I said. Religious people want what Elijah did. No. The Bible says anyone after John the Baptist is greater than anyone before. Amen. Jesus said greater works. Jesus said greater works. This is what King Jesus said. Our precious Lord said greater works shall you do. Amen. But everyone wants you to do what is written in scripture. That's crazy. You see, we don't, when people say it has to align with scripture, it doesn't mean that it has to be word for word in scripture. That's not what it means. It means if you take the full counsel of God, you know that God could do that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me be honest with you. There are a lot of men and women of God that are going to be very disappointed because the realm that people are going to function in. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. God is bringing us back into spirituality. Amen. Now you didn't hear what I said. Not religion. Walking in the spirit yes. is very, very different. Demons are not afraid of people who quote scriptures. They don't care. They don't care about you can quote all scriptures you want they don't care they measure the content of god in you they don't care about your theology you can have all the theology to argue with people online good for you but when you get into battle you will look for the one that has no theology but carries the power of god yes. lift your right hand to heaven say lord jesus lord jesus Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I call on you, my God. I call on you, my God. You are the giver of authority and power. You are the giver of authority and power. All authority and power belongs to you. All authority and power belongs to you. Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. Baptize me in the power of the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the power of the Holy Spirit. That I may walk with the wrong power of God. That I may walk with the wrong power of God. That women will know that you are God. Oh Lord Jesus, do it for me. Lift up your voice and call on him and pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Reveal yourself, God. Reveal yourself, God. Jesus. Listen to me. Don't let anyone put you into fear. Let me, let me say something before we continue. You see, fear has prevented many to walk with God. Because you have to always remember when you walk with Jesus, you will walk in unfamiliar territories. You will not, nothing can prepare you for seeing King Jesus. Nothing. Are you listening to me? So we have this fear in the church that God needs to deliver us from. 
when you walk with God the Bible says it like this in the last days there shall be so much deception that if it were possible even the very elect will be deceived meaning that it is not possible for an elect to be deceived Amen. so people highlight the deception they don't highlight the part that it says it is impossible it is impossible they have made you be afraid of angels who are actually ministering spirits that are supposed to help you so you are so afraid when they see me saying the angel of the lord is speaking to me they fear they say familiar spirit you really think demons know you how, how look at how we have exalted wicked spirits i always use this example imagine some uh, 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 jacob wrestles with an angel and the angel asks him what is your name the angel didn't even know his name They make it seem like the devil has a log of your life. Every demon that sees you automatically knows everything about you. That's a lie. That's the biggest lie. They have prevented you into entering even into deeper realms of the prophetic in the name of divination as if people who divine can do it. It's a lie. It's a big, big, big time lie. The Lord Jesus prophesied forensically. When he met one of the apostles coming to him, he said, there goes a true Nazarite. He said, my Lord and my God. He said, ah, you know, don't, that's not a big deal. While you are sitting under a tree, I saw you. Jesus is across town. Can see him sitting under a tree. The woman comes, he says, give me water. She says, no, I'm a Samaritan. Jesus said, okay, uh, where are your husband? She says, I have none. He says, you're saying the truth. You have five. And the one you are with is not even yours. You see, uh, uh, um, when uh, 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 Paul was still Saul, and the Lord speaks uh, uh, to what is his name again? The man of God that went to open his eyes. I forget the guy's name. Ananias. He goes to Ananias and tells him, Ananias, go to this address. You will find a guy called Saul. God is giving him address to a location, specific. But they will tell you, no, you don't need to know people's names you don't need to know that's a lie if God values something and many times many of them demonize this thing because they cannot do it you're helping us this is the issue if you cast out demons and they can't they will say it's demonic uh -huh. yet Jesus sets a standard he says Satan doesn't cast out Satan you know we can define doctrines that's fine the grace you see nobody has a monopoly on God Nobody has a monopoly on the Holy Spirit. Who the Holy Spirit is going to use? That's crazy. You see uh, 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 Cornelius being given specific locations of the address, the name of the person, where he's staying, where he will find. All these things are biblical. When I tell people, oh, somebody is by, I say, okay, I'm going to give you a baby. They say, who? witchcraft. <laughs> Yet Elisha is asking his servant, this woman has been taking care of us. What does she want? He says, I see that she has no child. Say, okay, I will give her a child. Didn't Peter say, what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus. But because they don't have that grace, they are used to everything. You see, you are supposed to be a storehouse. The Bible says that out of the treasures of the heart, a man brings out good things. Or evil things you are supposed to be a storehouse where you you have healing you have deliverance you have profit you no longer need to call 20 hours before you pray you can simply look you say oh this is what you want I have this one in the name of Jesus here you go Amen. that's Amen. how we are supposed to function it's supposed to be easy you have the connection to God but if somebody works quickly with flexibility ah it's witchcraft they start quoting scriptures dear beloved believe not every spirit ah but if you ask them okay who is real they will point to themselves what a shame you will be a different breed you are a different breed you will do greater than even me and those who came before you 
for the glory of the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. We are going to make one more prayer before we get into the Word of God. I am feeling the prophetic fire. I am feeling it in my spirit. Listen to me. You are going to pray. The Lord, listen, the Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear. You don't protect yourself. God protects you. Amen. The, Lord in my, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want anything. I cannot be afraid if the Lord Jesus is watching over me. Amen. You are in panic as if you can watch over yourself. What a deception we are walking in. It is the Lord that protects us. You can't protect you. I can't protect me. It's the king that protects us. So lift up your voice and pray this prayer. Say, Father, remove fear consciousness from me. Those who are in you are free. They are liberated. Lord, remove the spirit of fear from me. Remove fear consciousness from me. In Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Jesus name somebody shout amen, amen. Gra grab your Bibles very quickly let's read this and then we can sit Philippians chapter 2 mm -mm. actually let's do James chapter 4 verse 6 James chapter 4 and verse 6 I switched it it's not you can we all read it together? One, two, three. But he giveth more grace. Uh, let's read it like we mean it. One, two, three. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. One more time. One, two, three. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. One more time, one, two, three. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. You may sit in heavenly places. Ah, ah. <laughs> Man of God, you started too hardcore like this. Now, hear me by the Spirit of God. I'm trying to go through this bang, bang, boom, bang. We pray for people. Is that okay? Uh, you don't look like you're okay with that. Okay. Let me behave. Now, listen to what it says. It says, But he giveth more grace where he saith, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Now you need to ask yourself, what is pride according to God? You have to understand that what men consider to be pride is not what God considers to be pride. God says, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heavens are, so is God's ways compared to us, his thoughts compared to us. So in everything that we do with God, we do not judge it according to us. We measure it according to what God measures it to be. Now, 
God told me when I was on my way, I literally flew from, I missed my flight and I got the second flight and I literally landed and came straight to church. The Lord was speaking to me and he told me that, let my people know that they are going to break the hearts of their enemies. Ah, uh, you didn't hear what I said. Amen. Tap your neighbor, say, I am going to be a heartbreaker. I'm going to be a heartbreaker. I can't hear you. I'm going to be a heartbreaker. Uh, you better touch somebody, tell them I'm going to be a heartbreaker. I'm going to be a heartbreaker. Now you need to understand by the spirit of the living God that God considers certain things to be pride. Pride to God is not when you have money. Because if you look at the fathers of faith, they were very blessed by God. Abraham was a blessed man. David was a blessed man. Jacob, Jacob was a blessed, blessed man. Every single patriarch was blessed. It is only in our generation whereby people want those who serve God, who work with God to be poor. I condemn that spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is not the will of God. It has never been the mind of God. It has never been the desire of God. So you being blessed is not pride to God. If anything, it is a symbol that God's hand is also upon you. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Now, capture this by the Spirit of God. You being blessed is not a problem to God. That is not pride to God. But pride to God is when you set a foundation that God ought to build from. When God comes into somebody's life, God does not need anything from you or from me. God does not desire your perfection. God does not need your, 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 your degrees. God does not need your theology. God does not need your job experience. God needs nothing from you. He only needs to say it or, or to lay a foundation called Jesus Christ in your life. And when once the Lord lays Jesus Christ into your life, then the Lord God can build whatever he desires in you. Now many of us have restricted God from doing what he truly desires with us. If you look at the book of, uh, uh, um, uh, if you look at uh, uh, um, Jeremiah, you discover that God sends him into the porter's house and God says, uh, look at how the porter can change the pot whenever it does not resemble what he wanted it to be. My people are stiff necked, they do not allow me to do what I want to do. So pride to God is that when he comes into your life, he tries to shape you. You want to put restrictions on God, on how he should work in your life. God looks at you and he calls you. I feel like I'm preaching to myself. I'm, I'm looking for somebody I can talk to. When God finds you sick and God wants to heal you, but you don't want God to heal you the way he wants to heal you. To God that is pride. When God comes into your life and he wants to elevate you. But you are embarrassed of the elevation of God. Because other men and women of God, brothers and sisters will not accept you. That is pride to God. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Grace. Grace is attracted to humility. Mm, I'm going to say that one more time. Grace is attracted to humility. When the Bible says grow in grace, it is telling you find an area in your life that there is still pride. Allow humility so that grace can come into that part. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I prophesy to somebody. May you receive the realm of grace in the name of Jesus. So hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. Grace loves humility. Because the place of humility is a place that God has permission to do what he wants to do. You see, when we come to God, the Bible says, let us go to the throne of grace and receive mercy in time of need. The reason why we receive forgiveness from God is because of our acknowledgement that we are failing in this area. 
The moment we acknowledge that grace is available, that will bring the mercy and forgiveness of God in our lives. But this ought to be applied in every single area and dimension of your life. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Many of you are fighting battles not against demons, but it is God resisting you. I feel like I'm talking to myself. When God wants to bless you, you still look at yourself according to your family. You say, no, my mother never made it that way. This cannot be of God. When God looks at that, you are offended of God's blessing. Listen to me. There are so many men and women of God, children of God, that are ashamed of God's blessing. Let me tell you, if you're going to be ashamed of God's blessing, please don't go to heaven. If you don't want God's blessing on earth, please, heaven is not for you. There are no apartments in heaven. Everybody lives in a mansion in heaven. Every road is paved with gold. So if you don't like to wear a nice watch, a nice ring, chains, heaven may not be for you. If you're offended with bling bling, don't meet me in heaven because my crown is decked out. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Ah. (laughs) So understand this by the spirit of the living God. God is looking for somebody that he can mold. The battles you are fighting are to wake you up to the reality that you should allow Jesus to mold you. This is why the Bible says the testing of your faith. All these things, the attacks you're facing, is to provoke you that you grow lacking nothing. So you lack because you are still fighting instead of surrendering. Ah, that's good. Teach it. Teach it. I, I, <laughs> instead of looking and saying, you know what, Lord? I've been trying to bind this weakness for two years, three years. I went to every deliverance meeting, but I don't seem, I'm even trying to make myself manifest. (laughs) He's extra deep. (laughs) But God, what is wrong with me? No, 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 no. Let me explain something to you. There is a day I was watching a certain man of God. And this is years ago. And the man of God says, God anoints character. The angel of the Lord said, that's a lie. I said, huh? He said, God has never anointed character. He said, God anoints the person. Character maintains you in the purpose of God. No, you didn't hear what I said. God does not need a well-behaved person to anoint. You see, there's a lot of people that have put standards that are false. False standards. That now when you look at yourself, you start doubting that you can receive anything from God. Because you say, no, my my character hasn't developed. Yet, you are not the one who should develop character. It is the Holy Spirit in your life that will tell you, no, that is the wrong way. This is how you ought to behave. This is how you ought to walk. The anointing is not waiting for character. You see, when God comes into somebody's life, your personality is your fingerprint. Touch your neighbor, say, my personality is my fingerprint. My personality is my fingerprint. Okay, let me explain to you something that uh, I was taught this in heaven, and I'm going to help you to understand it. I pray that you'll be able to capture it. Amen. The Bible says, and God who knows us by name, right? Who calls us by name. But the issue is you guys read that name and you think it is David. It is love. It is, that's not what the Bible is saying. If you read the word anoma in Greek, it simply means in the way 
Christ will do it. You see, when you shout in the name of Jesus, that's not what casts out demons. It is the nature of Christ in you that rebukes demons. That is why the Bible says it like this. In the name of Jesus, you shall cast out demons. That name there is a norma. In the way Jesus would do it, you will cast out what? Demons. Now, people who scream Jesus, if that name actually worked in just saying the name Jesus, and I'm not saying the name of the Lord is not powerful. It sure is. Sure is. But it's powerful to those who carry his character, not their character. <laughs> Listen to me. If the name just operated on its own, the sons of Sceva would have never been whooped by demons. They went, they said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. They had the right apostle, the right Jesus, but demons said, uh, Jesus we know, Paul we know. Who, who, who are you? When they looked at the person spiritually, there was no character of Christ. Stop developing your character. Develop the nature of Jesus. Amen. No, you didn't hear what I said. Let the nature of Christ develop in you. Uh, this is why many times they are confused by me. Dreadlocks. And my African accent doesn't even help. Now they are sure. Um, but their confusion is they think my personality is a hindrance to God. No. Your personality can never change. Many of you, God can't use you because you are trying to turn into Prophet Lovi. You are trying to turn into T.D. Jakes. You're no, that's not what God called you to be. Learn from them, but don't try to be Apostle Gosham. No, that's not what he called you to be. I don't know if you can hear me. If you look at Peter's personality, Jesus loved that personality. He never told him to change. He just told him, don't cut people's ears, please. He never told him to change his zeal or his aggression. That is who Peter was. That is how God designed him. Personality is expressed through character. That is why you need good character to represent your personality better. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? But when God comes, when God anointed Cyrus, he says, Cyrus, my anointed. This guy had never even worshipped God. He wasn't even a believer. Jesus is, God is saying, Cyrus, my anointed. What? Are you grabbing what I'm saying by the Spirit? Yes. There is a nature that God wants to infuse into you. God wants Jesus' manifestation to be natural within you. That when troubles come, you can persevere as the Lord persevered. Amen. Not because you prepared for it, but it is instinctual. It is just who you have become. If you read in the book of Genesis, there's something interesting. Abraham goes into Egypt, tells Sarah, Hey, when we get in there, you're my sister. I am not trying to die. Not today. <laughs> the Pharaoh took his wife. All that good stuff, giving Abraham gifts. And then God comes to him at night, grabs him and tells him, you, you are a dead man. God started with threats. <laughs> God knows how to get people's attention. The Egyptian was afraid. God said, you are a dead man. He says, what? Lord, what have I done? He said, you, how dare you took the prophet's wife? He said, Lord, you know, I didn't know that this guy told me it's his sister. God said, return his wife unto him. Or else I will finish you and grab a seed to give him. <laughs> Remember there was a famine. So God is using this to bless Abraham too. And then he tells, the guy tells God, he tells God, you know I did not even touch her. 
Do you know what the Lord said? He said, I know you didn't touch her because I kept you from touching her. You are being taught to keep yourself. No. Let the Holy Spirit build you up. Amen. <laughs> that is the one controlling you now, not you controlling you. This is why many are disappointed with themselves because they've been fasting for 20 years. Yet they have never even manifested one demon. <laughs> so when they see <laughs> when they see you, they see me, they see others. They are they are offended and and the quicker you deliver them over wizard you are. True. Some of us we don't struggle 2 seconds maximum. We don't need two hours, three hours, five hours. We pass that level. It is a stage. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not bad. It is you have to grow. Your spirit must increase. So they demonize what they have never functioned in because they say, you see, when people say, I paid the price. I look and I say, what price? So you died on the cross. <laughs> Were you given power or did you work for power? Jesus said, I give you power. You're saying I paid the price. So you died for mankind. I remember one time I was in a, in a meeting. And this is back in the day when I was hiding my gift. For years, only people close to me knew what I could do. And to be honest with you, if people are offended now, I have not, I've only done maybe 1%, if even. There are things that we can do, we don't need to do because it doesn't necessarily point to Christ. It doesn't. It will be like I'm displaying myself. So I don't need to do it because it's not going to do anything. No, this is the truth. I promise you before God. So we, 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 we work calmly. But those who are close, they have seen some things. God wants to build us up. But many of us are frustrating God. We are not permitting God to build us up into people who can break our enemies' hearts. We are helping the enemy to see us fall. Yet the enemy should think we are falling, then we come out on the other side greater, bigger. Uh, I'm talking to the wrong people. Are you sure you can hear me? So these things function in realms and in dimensions. Grace loves humility. Because grace comes to those who need it, not those who want it. I'll say that one more time. Grace comes to those who need it, not those who want it. Grace is a response to a need, not a want. Mm. So when Jesus comes into your life, there is something he wants you to do. Let's look at this quickly. I feel like time is going faster than I can. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 7. Philippians 2 from verse 7. Listen to what he says. But made himself of no reputation. This is what God wants. Jesus made himself of no reputation. He did not wait for situations to make him of no reputation. He made himself. You see, God wants you to start from the bottom, not because you are nothing. That is why the Bible says the last shall be first. Who is making you last? Not because you lost a race. God is just preparing you differently. That those who went ahead of you thinking they are winning. They don't understand when the unction of God comes upon you. You will run faster than chariots. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Hallelujah. In those days they had chariots. In our day we have the Lambos, the Teslas. You will run faster. Amen. So Jesus made himself of no reputation. When the Lord Jesus was about to be born, the Bible never says uh, Joseph was broke. Mm. No, he never said that. 
Joseph was trying to find a hotel. He couldn't find any hotel. So Jesus was born in a manger not because they were poor. Because there was no hotel. God wanted to pick, paint a picture of humility. Listen to me by the spirit of God. You may be in an apartment not because you are broke. <laughs> you may be driving a, a 20, 2002 Toyota not because you are broke. God is just positioning you differently. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm pro I prophesied. <laughs> You are putting too much on yourself. Uh, are you listening to me? Are you here? <laughs> your father, the Bible says, silver and gold belongs to me. If your father, the Bible says we are co-heirs with Christ. Are you listening to me? We are co-heirs with Christ. Meaning what God gave to Christ, it's also ours. There is no day Jesus needed money and he did not have it. But when Jesus, before he started ministry, he was a carpenter. But when he entered into ministry, they told him pay taxes. He didn't even take his own money. He said, Peter, go catch fish. Jesus ordered a fish to go and find a ship that was shipwrecked. Take some few gold coins, swim up to the shore and wait for Peter. <laughs> and Jesus said, Peter, you've been avoiding taxes too. Go and pay yours also. So of everybody, Peter was just a problem. <laughs> So where God has started you is not a sign of failure. You know, those who are clapping, they have already broke through. They have already entered a realm and a dimension. Amen. You shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. It will make you free. So you are not suffering. God is just putting a nice movie. He's writing the best scripts. <laughs> so that when you pop out a hero... There is a storyline to you. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> Somebody shout glory. glory. Come on. So the devil wants you to try and put value on yourself. Yet the value is on Jesus who is in you. Amen. Amen. Mm. I, I hope somebody can hear me. God wants you to place your value in what Christ has ordained. Amen. Not in what you think you should be valued at. Woo! You see, something valuable is treasured and admired of all. When people tell you, tell people how they should treat you, it means you have no value. When you have value, people bid on what your value is. Let me go to the side where church is. Let me talk to those who can hear what I'm saying. The market value is always placed on demand. So many of you, when you go through a struggle, you argue with God. I don't know, you know when people say I was arguing with God, I fear. I said, have you really met this person? <laughs> ah, 
singing Jesus is no joke. Let me tell you, just seeing an angel will change your life. Seeing the king, ah, is different. Every, you will feel like you died a million deaths, but you are alive. You're talking about fear. You have never feared until you see God. Let me tell you, from the day I saw the Lord when I was six, I was nev I've never feared a demon in my life. Amen. You can't. I, listen, I promise you, you can't. <laughs> Seeing God, <laughs> it's different. Every ounce of strength in you leaves you. You feel like just a... You don't even know what to do with yourself. You feel like you want to take off your flesh like clothes and throw them to the side. You feel like you want the ground to swallow you. But when you see him, he's so simple, so sweet. I always pray that you have that experience of seeing the king. I will see. Not when you're in heaven. Let it begin when you're here. I will see. Ah, it's a deep experience. It's an interesting experience. He's, he's God, but he's so... There is a gentleness that a mother could never master. There is a kindness that doesn't even exist. But there is a presence. There is a healthy fear that is actually fear, fear, fear. You know, and people say, like, when you see an angel, you will not be afraid if you feel them. Listen, there are times I pray... The Chaz and them, they know. I will pray in my prayer room. The presence of God will come down strong. Angels will come. I will leave the room. <laughs> Until it comes down a little bit, then I go back inside. Because you feel like you can't even breathe. You read in, the, in, in Solomon's uh, book. It says when he offered offerings to God and the presence of God came down. Priests passed out. No one could sing, worship. Everybody was out. That is the God that lives in you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. So God wants to do something interesting. He wants you to not make yourself of any reputation. The reason why you're offended is because you want a certain reputation. The reason why they can attack you is because you want a certain st status. Anyone that is moved by reputation, God can't use you because you are not broken. I'm telling you the truth. Imagine when God went to the prophet and told him, I want you to preach for three years naked. Ah! As a sign that Israel is naked, Lord, can you just send a message telling them that they are naked? Why do I have to walk naked? That's what I want. <laughs> so imagine if you value you. You will miss the greatest privilege that is God speaking through you. Wow. Wow. Another one, the Lord tells him, I want you to go marry a prostitute. Why, Lord? As a sign that Israel, they've been like, Lord, can you just say this? What are they going to think of me? Remember Jonah. Jonah refused to prophesy to Nineveh. Then God, the whole fish situation happens and then he's brought back. He goes to prophesy and sits outside to wait for the city to be destroyed. And when it was not destroyed, he was disappointed. He said, God, you've ruined my reputation. They will never believe I'm a prophet again. It's literally written. So when somebody comes and tells you, this and this will happen, God can change his mind. This is why when it comes to like global things, I always tell people, let's pray about this. Ah, but people say, look at what he said. He didn't come to... I said, pray. You wanted it to happen. You want destruction. What is wrong with you people? We tell you pray about something. Then when it's averted, you say, but it didn't happen. So you wanted people to die. It's craziness. 
I told you about the queen dying. Did I post it online? I never even posted it. I didn't even post the video. I did it on live stream. I did it and I told you the, the month. I told you the time. The queen is... I never even posted it. A lot of people posted. I never said anything. I never even posted it. Those who are in church, you know I told you. True. But I just kept quiet and I just watched. But it's like people are celebrating destruction. Imagine if it was you, somebody standing on the pulpit saying you're going to die. Wouldn't you want people to pray that this is moved? But people are waiting to see that you die, then they say, yeah, he's real. Something you need to be smacked. It's demonic. It's dem like, look at how we want distraction. What is wrong with us? It's because we want reputation over salvation. We desire reputation over salvation. God wants to rescue people. We want people to be destroyed, to validate our religion. To validate our religiosity. To validate that we hear from God. No, I don't want people to die. You see, the, the, the thing is when I prophesy to people and I tell them, you, you are supposed to die on this day and if you don't change this, you're going to die. They're like, who are you to tell people who are going to die? Do you know how many prophecies in the Bible people are given dates that they are going to die? And they died. There are people I told, this one, if you don't change this, you're going to die. They didn't listen and they died. And there are those who I told them, if you change this, God will save you. They changed it and they lived. But it's like people want people to die. Remove that desire to be of any reputation. The moment you are of no reputation, no demon can attack you. Amen. Because they know that you don't care anyway. You won't care if people talk about you. You won't care if people do anything about you. You will keep running with what God has given you to do. This is truly destroying children of God in church. We want big time reputation. The Bible says Jesus made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant. Meaning Jesus was not a servant, but he took that form. Through every season of your life, you need to understand what form God wants you to take. I feel like I'm talking. Are, are you sure you can hear me? <laughs> there is a form God wants you to take. There's sometimes God wants you to pretend you're foolish in the sight of people. There's a time God wants you to act like you don't know anything. Let me tell you. Somebody who God has not elevated, their counsel is, is valued at nothing. So many of you are trying to speak to people. It's not time to speak yet. God is building you up to a certain place that when you speak, nations will stop Amen. to hear you. Amen. We have so many people trying to promote themselves before their time. And they think the promoting themselves is talking about other people. So and so is doing this wrong. So and so. I have never seen the ministry of reaction. <laughs> Has never existed. Somebody preaches this, you make a whole video talking about them. It means you have no work of your own. You, you have lost the plot. You know, it is different if you're discussing other things that people are interested in. But for you to just take somebody's sermon and sit down. You should be preaching your gospel. Amen. What did God tell you to preach to people? Why are you busy preaching what the other people preach to try? Something is off. It's because it is envy in many men of God, many women of God. We want what other people want. We can't understand why God elevated them. Newsflash, God has never elevated a perfect person. God will elevate who he wants to elevate. 
God will always elevate the humble. It is God who gives increase. Not you, not me. There is no day in my life I ever sat down and looked for a marketing strategy to bring people to church. Never. I will never do it. God gave me something to do and God brought people. That's all that it is. I didn't sit down. I'm going to have this outreach plan. It never happened. Our strategy is doing what God wants us to do. Amen. When, you are, when you apply yourself where God wants you to, to, to apply yourself, it is the place that God grabs you and lifts you. That's where promotion is. How can you be promoted trying to do somebody else's job? No, you didn't hear that one. How can you be promoted doing, trying to do somebody else's job, yet your own you're not doing? Are you capturing what I'm saying? Take the form of a servant. Take the form of a what? Servant. Start looking for where you can be a benefit to people because that is how God promotes you. In the kingdom of God, the greater you are, the greater servant you become. You do not become great to be served. You become great to be a servant. Amen. So God measures your greatness when you have no reputation. Yes. Can you still serve? Can you still help? Can you still clean? Can you still clean the bathrooms? Can you still clean the chairs? That is the place that God looks and says, wow, you are ready for the next level. Amen. That is what God is pursuing. When we have this together, let me tell you. You see, when you have been down, you cannot be pushed any lower. When you are built on Christ, that foundation cannot be changed. That foundation cannot be moved. If God builds a one story on top of Christ, it doesn't matter if the wind blows, it doesn't matter if storms come, that one story will remain. Amen. Then God will build the second story on top of that. Yes. Nobody can change it. But the key is, are you a servant? Because the enemy, the devil wants to see you fall. There are men and women that are praying. Listen, there's a, there's a, a few days ago I was talking to, actually was it yesterday, I was talking to my younger brother while I was in New York. And you know the problem with these eyes is that even if you're my friend and you are planning something against me, I will know. God will snitch on you. You say, be careful of this one. This is what they were saying. Would... You see, the thing about visions is this. It's like God takes you to that moment and you're watching them talk. You're like... <gasps> <laughs> I am not a prophetic voice. I'm a prophet. It's different. Amen. It's not the same thing. Amen. The spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. If God tells me something, I can look into it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper if I want to. You sit down and you're like, <sighs> and then when you meet them, you kiss them, you hug them, they don't even know. This coming year, no one will prepare anything against you. And you remain in the dark. God will, God will expose everyone preparing a trap for you. Amen. And they will fall in their own traps in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I'm finishing. I know my time is gone. Let's read this quickly. Let's read this quickly. Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Psalms 44. From verse 4, I believe. I need, I need my scriptures, please. <laughs> are, you, are you there? Yes. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverance for Jacob. Hmm. Deliverance is commanded. Verse 5. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> Through thee we, will we push down our enemies... 
through thy name we will tread them under that rise up against us. Verse 6. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. I wish this would enter your spirit. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hate us. When you are in the place of humility, you don't need your bow, you don't need your sword. You need God to put those who hate you to shame. Amen. But thou has saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hate us. Ah, verse 8. Let me finish with this. In God we boast all day long and praise thy name forever. Selah. Listen to me. The Lord spoke to me and he told me, after this night, you are about to break many hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, those who are waiting for your ministry to fall will be heartbroken. Those who are waiting for your family to collapse, they will be heartbroken. Amen. Those who are preparing traps for you, they will be heartbroken. Amen. Today, only three things God wants you to do. Remove pride, meaning allow him to do what he wants to do. Number two, choose humility. It attracts grace. Number three, Stop depending on your bow and your sword. It can't help you. It will never help you. When God steps in, God will take away any shame that they were expecting to be on you. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. God will put some respect on your name. Now you... <laughs> Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. God will put some respect on your name. When people remember your name, when people mention your name, the fear of God will come upon them. Because God will elevate your name. Because God will elevate your name. Hallelujah. I want you to stand up and pray. We are finishing now. I want you to stand up and pray. You are going to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, I position myself today in the place of humility that you may increase the grace over my life. Listen, pray like your life depends on it because it does. Tell the Lord, Lord, I humble myself. I choose the place of humility. I make myself of no reputation. What my mother said, what my father said, what my ex said, what my children have said, I'm putting it on the side because you will vindicate me. I don't need to do that anymore. I choose the place of humility that you may glorify yourself by Pouring more grace on me. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Remande le kidia makadash. Frevene me halukia me kedish. Fremende liga akuria medebe debea. Lebron de Peria Makato Lekidia Aria Mase. Father, position me in the place of humility, O God, that I may grow in grace, O God. Father, make me of no reputation, O God. May I not walk in pride, O God. Everything that is in me that is trying to form reputation, Father, deliver me from it, Father God. Position me in the place of humility for the sake of your glory, for the sake of your kingdom, O God. 
Saruma, Ruma, Ruma, Leventima, Arute, Vasa, Sila, Procopa, Asicare, Neleva, Ila, Santa, Levanto, Le Paruda, E Comba, Rivite, Le Mosa, Tele, Ica, Ica, Randila, Baroca. Keep praying, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Marum, 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 Tele, Baroco, Tesica. Saroke le marita ravaso, repandala vas. Maraki te le maroto, sika mande le boriga. Sakore le veti le braga. I place myself in the place of humility, O God. Pour out your grace. Karote le karote le. Pour out your grace, God. Sikaro pale ve. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. For myself, Father God, Father, remove from me, remove the desire of my heart to be a reputation, oh God. Let my heart posture be to give you all the glory, oh God. May I remove myself out of the equation, oh God. Saruko parilevete. I make myself of no reputation, God. But I choose humility on this day. I throw away everything I was trying to build in my own name, God. And I choose the position of humility. Pray. 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 Remendele Behayaka In Jesus name Jesus name Say Father in the name of Jesus 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 Thank you that you are going to put my enemies to shame Thank you that you are going to put my enemies to shame Thank you that you are going to put my enemies to shame Thank you that you are going to put my enemies to shame That a mighty deliverance is coming to me and my house That a mighty deliverance is coming to me and my house A mighty elevation is coming to me and my house A mighty elevation is coming to me and my house In the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Thank you, Father God, oh God, that a mighty deliverance is coming to my home. For the sake of my family, oh God, deliverance is coming to my home. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name. In the same. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry, let me explain something to you. The difference between prophetic words and prophecy is this. A prophet's main duty 
The Bible says, by a prophet was Israel delivered, and by a prophet was it preserved. Yeah. Prophetic people, they give words which are good. Nothing wrong with it. They will encourage you. They will build you up. They can even say what is going to come. We thank the Lord Jesus for that. But a prophet is different because a prophet is not gifted. The prophet is the gift. Amen. The Bible Amen. says when Jesus ascended, he gave gifts to men. Yeah, yeah. Some prophets, it's different. So when I am dealing with people, I am not coming to give you words. I'm coming to liberate you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. In order for me to save somebody in the name of the Lord, the Lord must give me background so that we know what spirit we need to deal with. Yes. But I don't know where, and this is a, you know, and I know this for a fact. I don't know where this, it, it is so shocking. And this is becoming a thing in America for real. It's because they are seeing a dimension they haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And automatically you're fake. Yeah. Because you do something that people, they, they, how can you credit this to a familiar spirit? What's wrong with you? Look at how this young man is suffering. God comes to open the door for this young man to right. be free. Right. And you're going to credit it to a familiar spirit. You may be demon possessed to even think like that. It's blasphemy. It's blaspheming God. Super blaspheming God. But all this is because people are jealous. And the, and the, the, the funny thing is this. Always remember this. The spirit of murder did not start in the world. It started in the church. Yes. Those who are in the presence of God got jealous of each other and killed one. Ooh. Cain saw Abel being received by God and he killed his brother. Wow. Not because he was demon possessed. Yeah. Jealousy is worse than being demon possessed. Wow. And this is what the church is suffering from. They will see God using my brother. I, there's no man of God I don't embrace. Whether you love me, you don't love me, it's fine. I know the body doesn't fight amongst itself. I celebrate anyone that is preaching Jesus, delivering people. I celebrate them. I have no problem with them. We are Amen. leading people to Christ. Amen. You may have some things right. I may have some things wrong. We are leading people to Jesus. That's what it's about. Yeah. Why would you look at your brother leading people to Jesus and you have a problem with that? And you say prophecy doesn't work like that, yet you can't see nothing. Eee. Words are not prophecy. Yeah. That is not a prophetic realm. That's called being a Christian. Every Christian who has the Holy Spirit can prophesy and give words to people. There is nothing wrong with that. Amen. It should be like that. But when some of us function in a different dimension, you want to be evil. It's sad. Think about how many years them and their family have suffered. And God within a second, the angel of the Lord would hold my hand and show me these things in order to pray for him. Yeah. Look at him crying. And you want to call that demonic. All this is because you want to be prophet so bad. Yet you don't become a prophet. You are born one. Amen. That is really the problem with people. You don't become an apostle. You are born one. You don't become an evangelist. You are born one. There is nothing wrong with being zealous for these things. Go to those who have it, ask them to lay hands on you and impart you. Amen. That's how the kingdom of God works. But don't start demonizing people because they are doing what you can't do. Yeah. Shame on you. Amen. We are destroying the body of Christ. We are, we, are doing the, we are doing demons' jobs better than demons can do. Shooting your own leg and expecting to go so far. Cutting your hand off. Cutting your mouth off. And you expect God to elevate you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on the church. That's why the world is laughing at us. Why would they want to be Christian? Listen, have you ever seen Muslims fighting against each other? Yet they don't even know God. They will lie to defend each other. We are not born of lies. But not even understanding that, you know what? There are things he may know. 
there are things he may not know but God is using him let's yeah. pray that's the same thing that the apostles had yeah. They wanted everyone circumcised. They wanted everyone to do this. Then the Holy Spirit came on them. Them themselves, they said, wow, there is no more Jew or Gentile. We are all just children of God. Why is it so difficult for us to do that? The spirit of Cain is running into people. It's evil. When you see a man of God applaud them, you see a woman of God applaud. I have nothing against anyone. Amen. But it is a shame when you are destroying the work of God. I saw, I, saw, I saw Bishop Jakes casting out a demon out of... People made a problem with that. He may have not been like him. He's a master of deliverance. That's fine. He may not know, but Jesus set somebody free. Can we clap for the Lord? Yes. Celebrate that deliverance is coming to the forefront. Hallelujah. Why can't we be like that? Why does everything have to be the way we want it to be? It's evil extra evil the wickedness of man may be worse than even satan's because this is crazy yeah. young man listen to me yes. the lord has heard your cry and the lord is going to deliver you Hallelujah. this evil spirit will depart from you Hallelujah. the lord will rescue you the lord will rescue your family stretch your hands towards him Thank and begin you, to bind that demon command that evil spirit to leave him in the name of jesus about to go to the overflow in a second Amen. man of God can you pray for him for me help this young man please hallelujah this is what the kingdom of God is about Amen. if a man of God is genuine and he carries a gift from God let him use his gift yes. Amen. Amen. two is better than one Amen. Lift your right hand to God. Say, Father, more grace. Father, Father more, grace. more grace. More grace. More grace. Let's lift up your voice and begin to pray. Over. In Jesus' name. 
Are you here? Yes. Can, can you please my microphone in here? One, two, one, two, one, two. Microphone check, check. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. 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 Professor. It's coming. Listen to me. Never show me these things. Don't show me. Put it away. I don't need to see it. I'll pray for you, but I don't need to see it. Amen. Amen. When I'm navigating, if I don't come to you, know that Jesus has already taken your issue. Amen. Amen. That's why you don't tell me anything. I know. Amen. Go there. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me, children of God. Ah. You know, I, I, I always say this, that I can call people's names and 24-7 and all that stuff, but I want you to believe God. So if I just stay, you know, now they say calling names is familiar spirit. <laughs> or even, even though these are things that convict people to know that God is speaking to them. Yeah. To open their hearts so that they can receive. But now you can't do that, it's a familiar spirit. So I always now want to just deal with things that are so far in. So that they say now how we Google that one. I always say this, if you're part of this family, hearing God is easy. Woo. Amen. You don't need 10 million fastings and praying, you need grace. Amen. Grace is the recipe. You see, many have been deceived to think fasting gives you power. It doesn't. It's Jesus that gives power. Amen. People are into the how to, not who is. It's a problem. It's a big time problem. That's good. How are we looking for something yet the one who gives it, we don't want him? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can celebrate Jesus. Listen to me. Shh. There are dimensions in God. Amen. This is why we need to be humble so that God can lift us up. Amen. Amen. So that God can do what? Lift us up. Don't be content with one place. God can do exceedingly abundantly what we can think or imagine. Are you listening to me? God can do beyond what we think. Amen. The issue is uh, we have too much pride that we are not willing to learn. God has graced me, but I learn from people. Amen. You never stop learning. There's always another place in God. Are you listening to me? Yes. There is another level in God. Amen. There is always another place in God. That's why I keep saying... You, to be honest, the things that we can do are. Ah. <laughs> you see, we have diluted spirituality too much. We have become so useless spiritually because we have pigeonholed God like this. God has no freedom. Next year, They think it's bad now. Ah. It's going to be crazier. But you will do even better than me. Hallelujah. 
you do greater than me Amen. for the glory of the Lord Jesus say in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we lift up everyone we lift up everyone that is connected to us that is connected to us that the king of glory that the king of glory will heal Will heal and restore, and restore each and every one of them. Each and every one of May them. the glory of the living Jesus May the glory of the living Jesus be revealed through them. Be revealed through them. Let them be healed. Let them be healed. Let them be delivered. Let them be delivered. Let them be transformed. Let them be transformed. Let them be elevated. Let them be elevated. In the name of Jesus. May each and every one of them find the Lord Jesus. May each and every one of them find the Lord Jesus. May we rejoice in heaven. May we rejoice in heaven. And may we testify on earth. And may we testify on earth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you believe it is done, clap your hands to the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Grab what you want to give to God quickly. Listen to me, the year is about to end. Yeah. And we are still fasting. And we are still praying. How many people are still fasting and praying? Amen. Man of God in the white sweater, you standing next to that handsome... Yes, yes, you. Come. Don't worry, man of God, it is done. Amen. It is finished. Amen. Amen. Come, come. Is it your first time here? Yes. Where did you come from? Arizona. You came from Arizona yes. by yourself? Yes. By yourself? Yes. Okay. Come close to me. Lift your hands to Jesus. I want God to bless you and to increase you. Amen. Okay, Amen. Huh? Amen. Uh -uh, you're not talking to me. You don't want me to minister to you. <laughs> you're sure? Yes. I want God to bless you and increase you. Amen. Okay. Amen. okay. Amen. Um, Hallelujah. Okay. Is that? Amen. Grab what you want to give to God. Lift it to heaven. Lift it to heaven. The year is about to end. This is a very important time. It's a very serious time. I <laughs> what is my what? What key? <laughs> oh. Uh, open every door. Hey. Amen. Amen. Open. <laughs> when you see me in a dream, may, it's not me. It is God. <laughs> Unless he tells me, I won't know. <laughs> Let me ask you, do you have two boys? Come. Professor. Now he's talking to me. <laughs> if he doesn't talk to me, I don't know. I am just as clueless as you. Come. If he doesn't talk to me, I have no clue. <laughs> I am just as uh, helpless as you. Now, where, where are they? Okay. My, my parents in Fairfield. Okay. Okay, this key is for them. Are you listening to me? The angel of the Lord said that this key is for your boys. Hallelujah. There is a mighty door that God will open for them. And the things that you have gone through and your family has gone through, the key is to close that that it doesn't trickle to these ones. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you listening to me? The key is for them. <laughs> Father, may their destiny be unlocked. Look at me. Thank you, Lord. Let it be so. 
Let it be so in Jesus' name. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Let it be so in Jesus' name. It is finished. Now you know what the key is for. Amen. Lift, lift, <laughs> lift it up. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. I promise you I'm going to do this one day. I'll just line up everyone and I promise you I'll prophesy everyone. Amen. People who give words cannot give words unless the Lord speaks. A prophet can speak to anyone. You see, Eli was at the temple minding his business. Samuel's mother is crying. He even thought that she was drunk. And came to her and said, how can you be drinking at the temple? She said, no, I, I, I'm crying because of my prayer. She said, sorry, 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 go, your prayer is answered. Immediately she's pregnant. There is a dimension that your words, your presence becomes somebody's answer to prayer. Amen. This is where Jesus, our Lord, wants to take us. Amen. I thought I would hear a bigger amen. Amen. This is where God wants to place us. Not in a lower place, but in a high place. Amen. Today, as you give to God, speak to Him. Tell Him, may my giving to you, Lord, let it be a memorial before you that every time you are looking on earth, you see me. Yes. And you remember me and my house. Amen. Let this be the prayer of your heart. You see, the church has diluted giving because they've made it about taking care of things in the house of God. Even though that is true, that is not the main reason you give. You give because you cannot engage spiritually without a sacrifice. It doesn't work like that. Every spiritual encounter demands a sacrifice before God. Amen. And the people who argue about giving and stuff, you notice they have zero ounce of power. True. They can't heal anyone. They can't deliver anyone. They just talk a lot. There is no engagement with the divine without an offering. Did Jesus, was Jesus the ultimate sacrifice? Yes. But what was he a sacrifice for? For remission of sins, to restore us unto the Father, so that we can engage with the Father the way we ought to. Nowhere did Jesus say abolish giving. Jesus was in the temple watching people give. Giving is essential. You worship God with your giving. It is part of walking with God. You cannot buy a miracle. You cannot buy deliverance. But you can give into your miracle. You can give into your deliverance. Amen. You can give into your elevation. When Abraham met God and God told him, go outside, and God promised him how he was going to be a great nation. Do you know what Abraham told God? <coughs> he said, God, what do you want me to give? God told him, find this and find this and give it to me. Did God need an offering? No. It is the way spiritual things operate. In our time, we don't need bulls and, and chickens and all that. We don't need any of that. Your, your money represents your sweat and your sweat represents your blood. <clears throat> Every time you give, you are giving away something that is from you, you labored for. This is why when you give, you have to do it prayerful. Are there people who lie to people about giving? Yes. Yes. Does it mean that giving is false? No. Is somebody listening to me? In Africa where we come from, when a man of God is teaching and a word connects you, people run to the altar and give. Why do they give? They give because they are saying what was spoken is mine and I capture it by my offering. Amen. This is why the Western world is powerless. True. Go overseas, go anywhere. Even Asia, anywhere where people are truly seeking God, you see the power of God. The Western world is too comfortable. Remember that prayer. The Lord, as I give this to your work, I give this. Let it be a memorial before you. Every time you look at earth, see me and remember me. Don't do anything on the earth without me being part of it. 
Let that be a sincere prayer. If God could remember Cornelius for his giving, Cornelius fasted and prayed. God only saw his prayer and giving. Never saw his fasting. Ignored it. Jesus said the greatest sign of life, love is to lay down your life for another. Whenever you give, what do you think you're doing? You're sacrificing. You're laying yourself down. You could have gone and done something with that, but you're choosing to lay it before God. It means a lot to Jesus. And it also serves the purpose of God. Then what you have is secured in God. God will not allow you to be poor. God will not allow you to struggle because you assist in his work. Father, I pray for your people as they're getting ready to give to you. Father, remember them, increase them. Let them prosper even as their soul prospers. Let there be a tremendous turnaround for every single thing that is with them. Show them your glory, show them your grace, show them your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Come and amen. give to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I can't hear you. Thank, thank you, Lord, you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. As you get ready, as you get ready to give. Hallelujah. You heard the prophet. He said, give prayerfully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to dance before the Lord and give before his presence? Yes. Come on now.
still have people coming, right? Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> How many know that it is good to dance in the presence of Hallelujah. the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, as you coming in, we want to dance before him. Oh, I can dance. I can dance. I can dance, I can dance, I can shout, I can shout, I can dance, I can dance. Oh, when I think about Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can dance, I will dance, I will dance. somebody to church on Christmas Eve. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for sharing this beautiful day with us. Amen. The baby in the stomach returning by the sound of the prophet's voice. How beautiful, how powerful is the God that we serve. So if you missed it, make sure you rewatch it on YouTube. Um, this was a service that you need to watch multiple times. It was so powerful. Take your notes. 
is amazing. So thank you for joining us today. We will see you this weekend for Christmas Eve service here at Revelation Church. We will not see you for Christmas Day, so stay that. Keep in with your families, but we will see you for Christmas Eve. And we'll see you next weekend for the crossover service, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So we can't wait to see you. We have a jam-packed schedule for this holiday season. We love you. God bless you. Have a blessed week. crossing over in a different way.